What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another episode of Pittsburgh Pirates franchise and today I promised you trades at the end of the last video. I said a lot was going to happen and a lot is going to happen and the first thing we're going to do is try and fill out some of this team in free agency and there are certain guys who are just sitting here that can really help solidify this team and I would be foolish not to at least offer them contracts. Trevor Rosenthal being the first one. I'm not out here trying to offer five-year deals. But for two years, I could sign Trevor Rosenthal to a big league contract. But in order to do that, we're going to have to go ahead and clear up some space. And that might be via trades. The first player I'm going after is Waskar Inoa from the Atlanta Braves. He's currently projected to be their fifth starter. They have Tookie Toussaint, Kyle Muller underneath. They have great depth at the position, and we're looking to add a great young potential ace. And for me, I think Enoa fits all of those to a T. And we do have a couple suggested trades that I'm pretty comfortable in making. Now, people are asking, do you want this to be realistic? Do you want this to be super fun? Do you want to just do whatever? And I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. I don't really want to go out and trade for Mike Trout. I don't really want to go out and trade for, you know, bona fide superstar players. But, for example, another player I'm going after is Gleyber Torres. He might be the fourth or fifth infielder on the Yankees right now. And if you were to look at the Yankees roster in here, he's not even the highest rated short, uh, second baseman. Now playing second base again. So... That, to me, feels like a fine trade. And if they've been rumored in trades, like a Frankie Montas, who I don't really think I'm going to go after, but I might end up, I don't really have a problem making a move because that's realistic enough. Even though he's the Athletics ace, he's been heavily rumored to be traded, at, you know, as is Sean Manaya, and the A's are always in a fire sale, apparently. So... I want to make it a little bit more realistic in that regard. So, yeah, fifth starter on the Braves. I think I could trade for Enoa. So, I really tried to not give up Leover Paguero. 21 years old, one of the top prospects in the Pirates organization. I believe he's number six. Could be number four. Let me let me double check. Yeah, so Leover Paguero, according to MLB Pipeline, I know it changes on Baseball America and, and things like that. He's a number six prospect. I believe he's also in the top 100. He's just not someone that I think is going to be in the long-term future of my team. I plan on making a lot of moves. And you have to. I, I know it seems like, oh, don't be you know super unrealistic. But when you look at this team, how many guys, I said this in the last episode, how many guys are realistically going to be here long-term that you can build around? It's Brian Reynolds. Nobody else in the outfield. It's O'Neill Cruz. It's Key Brian Hayes, and then maybe you're talking about Michael Chavis, of course, Nick Gonzalez. It's nobody at first base, and then it's like Henry Davis and maybe Roberto Perez for the position players. It's not a lot. So there's going to be so much turnover. So we're going to make a lot of moves. It just has to be done. We're going to do a little bit now and, of course, a lot later. But the first trade is going to be Mitch Keller. I just don't see his viability as a future starter on the team. I really don't. We're going to have to move Lee over Paguero to get it done. And Carter Bins, who is the third best catcher in our organization, only 23 years old. And I think Waskar Inoa is certainly worth getting. Yes, only the fifth best pitcher in the Braves system, but he is only 23 and developing. Uh, he broke his hand by punching a door, I believe, or a wall last year. Something fun. And he also hit a home run. So he got a little bit of pop as well. Could be fun even though I doubt that plays any effect at all. But we're going to make this trade. It sucks to see Leover Paguero go. Number six prospect, gone. But in return, we have a potential future ace and the joint second highest rated pitcher in the entire rotation. So I'm happy about that move. Also very cheap as well. But this is the trade we're going to make for Glaber Torres. As I said earlier, he is in a really odd position with the Yankees right now. And I'm not going to even consider Jose Peraza. But when you consider Isaiah Connor Falef is going to start it short. At third, you have Josh Donaldson. DJ LeMahieu probably going to do a lot of time at second base. And then you have Anthony Rizzo. I think guys are going to move around a lot. But 
Glaber Torres might be the odd man out right now. So we're going to try and revitalize his career after two real down years in a row. And if you think about our team, Michael Chavis, yes, he is our second baseman, but he's not. He's going to end up moving to first base and hopefully be real solid over there. Against lefties, he will be the guy. Maybe platoon with Yoshitomo Satsugo and Daniel Vogelback. So we'll do that. And in order to do so, we're giving up Jack Sawinski, young outfielder. He's not great, I'm going to be honest. And Ethan Paul is kind of along those same lines. Uh, they would have done it without Ethan Paul, by the way. I'm just throwing him in there to sweeten the deal a little bit. But really the big piece of this is Bryce Wilson. Starting pitcher, only 24 years old. See potential really isn't too bad. So build the Yankees farm system in terms of young pitchers. And he would slot in uh, right in here as one of the top 10 pitchers in the Yankees organization or very close. Uh, and he's one of the youngest as well. So that's what we're doing there. Bryce Wilson is the, the real piece here. And even though as a Yankees fan, I really hope Glaber Torres doesn't get traded in real life. I don't know if you can tell from that poster, that metal poster. Glaber is one of my favorite players in the league. And I think he's going to be a really good player to build around in this Pirates franchise. So Glaber Torres will be the newest Pittsburgh Pirate. So I would say this has already been an overwhelming success. We have Glaber. We have Waskari Noah. And... I don't think we're done. The bullpen is terrible. Relievers shouldn't really hold a ton of value. So we're going to try and bolster the pen a little bit and hopefully acquire some guys that are ready to go. Next trade I'm making is for a reliever. We're going to move Chris Sharp. I just don't ever see him becoming a major league fixture at all. We're going to be trading two pitchers, a reliever in Jeffrey Passantino, it kind of feels like a decent swap. And Kyle Nicholas, who is a young starter for the Twins, Jorge Alcala will bolster uh, our relievers with now the new highest overall reliever on our team, a 73 overall. We'll also do a straight up swap here. Jose Suarez, the reliever from the Angels, only 24 years old for a young second baseman in our organization, Rodolfo Castro. And that will go through. And he is only a 69 overall, but he's still young. I think he's going to develop really well. So that's really the impetus to make this move. Got a good fastball. Enough. Sinker, change up, curveball. Very good differentials. And hopefully he should make a difference in our bullpen. All right, Trevor Rosenthal wants a little bit more money. And still, does he want $7 million for two years? How much money do you want? All right, Trevor Rosenthal has signed a big league contract and he will be one of our best relievers. Now, where does he fit in? I think he'll probably be the setup to David Bednar. I want him to be the closer. I'm not moving him out of that spot. But Trevor Rosenthal hopefully doesn't turn into Trevor blows them all and hopefully should be a fixture uh, of our bullpen, which we've really put a lot of focus into to start this year. Michael Conforto is really tempting. He hasn't signed in real life. Apparently, there's a lot going on. Apparently, one, he's anti-vax, so no team wants to sign him for that reason. You might be risking missed games. And apparently, also uncoachable. Think he knows or thinks he knows everything and doesn't want to take any coaching, which is pretty bad. <laughs> uh, I don't know how true that is, but it is speculated. And the fact that it's opening day and he still remains without a team, and that's true in real life, we're just two days away from opening day as I record this. I think Michael Conforto is worthy of a big league contract. Now, what am I willing to sign him to? It's another short-term deal. But I would give him I would give him 12 million for two years, and he would start. He'd be an everyday player. Maybe he could even take that down to eleven mil. He wants more money. I give me I could give you twelve. Alright, Michael Conforto has signed, and that will be the last move we make. So already this team doesn't look a ton like how it looks in real life. But for the most part, it does. Like Conforto isn't anything crazy in game. Only a 77 overall right now. Still have Chavis. We did bring in Anoa. Did bring in Rosenthal. But all the top guys are still the same. And 
unfortunately for Pittsburgh, the top guys just aren't very good. It's really just Brian Reynolds right now, and you hope Key Brian Hayes and our guy O'Neill Cruz can come along. But Conforto will get added to the 40-man just as soon as we take somebody off. Let's remove Austin Bryce. We won't, we won't really care if he ends up getting claimed by somebody else, which I think is unlikely anyway. We'll add Conforto to the 40-man and promote him to the MLB team, and I think we're ready to go. A lot to start week one here. I say week one, totally in NFL mode. Uh, we'll start opening day with a pretty different looking team, but one I think that should be a whole lot better. All right, these will be the teams for opening day. No Glaber. He already played a game for the Yankees, so he's not going to get the start here. But it's an overcast day, unfortunately. Not exactly the most beautiful start, but yes. Take a look at the new Pittsburgh Pirate, Michael Conforto. There's Arenado, of course. Uh, we are fairly outmatched, unfortunately. But we're going to fight as much as we can fight. First game at PNC Park. And hopefully we can bring these Pirates back to the glory days, which are well in the past. You got to go back a long way to get to Willie Stargell and Roberto Clemente. And, I mean, even Dave Parker in the 80s was pretty good. But that's all right. And, yeah, the Pirates did have some playoff runs with Andrew McCutcheon, who maybe we'll look to bring back at some point in the future. But for opening day, we have what we have. Coming off one of the worst performances imaginable, it was not great for the Pirates. But we're hoping to right those wrongs this season. Although I will say, it's probably what we would call a transitional year, to say the least. But Zach Thompson was great last year. Had a good spring training as well. And I think he could be a sneaky ace caliber guy for us. So I'm hoping Zach can really pitch lights out. And we'll see if he can dominate this Cardinals lineup. One, two to Tommy Edmond. He'll lay off the circle change. And he'll miss wide with a cutter as the count runs full. Here's the payoff pitch to Tommy Edmond, and he fouls it off, continuing to work. Zach Thompson already to six pitches on just the first batter. Here's the three, two, and Edmond will draw a walk. Not a great start. For Zach Thompson, but we're hoping he can find it. Just the first batter. As Is this Edmundo Sosa in the two spot? And he'll ground that one to Kevin Newman. He'll flip on O'Neill Cruz. Back on a first, beating the speedy Sosa down the line. Double play. That's what you have when you get Zach Thompson. You have a sinker baller that will induce a lot of weak contact, a lot of ground balls. And gets a big double play here. So two batters, two outs. Erases the walk. And a good turn from the middle infield, even though you're not going to see a whole lot of Kevin Newman, thank God, in this franchise series. Goldschmidt swings, chasing a circle change, just gets a piece. Here's the one-two, and he'll line that one back up the middle. Brian Reynolds fields. But this is not a super clean inning from Zach Thompson. But this is quite a strong lineup. And here is the strongest hitter of the bunch, arguably, in Nolan Arenado. Here's a 2-2. He'll foul off a cutter. He might see another one here. And he'll chase. Try to come back in. Front door. Nope. Back door. And Michael Chavis. Maybe not super experienced with playing first base. Refused to run to the bag. And flipped onto the pitcher for out number three. One hit. No runs. No errors. And we'll see what Jack Flaherty has in store. This is a Pirates team who I have I have some hope in. No Glaber, but the biggest addition right now is Michael Conforto. Nobody wanted him, but we did. We took a shot on him. Two-year contract. And hopefully we'll have some decent luck facing the Cardinals ace. Here's Brian Reynolds against Flaherty. Here's a 2-1. And Reynolds will get a hold of that one. That's driven deep to right. Will it go? No. 
caught at the wall. Brian Reynolds just missed it. And that would have been a great start to this season. But as you can see from the bottom ticker, we acquired Waskar Enoa, making some big moves already in this franchise. Ski Brian Hayes will draw the walk. It's already a full count to O'Neill Cruz. Here's the payoff pitch. And Cruz will swing through a great circle change. Flaherty with filthy stuff. Got Cruz out in front. A just whiffed. Great pitch from Flaherty. And here for the first time, we'll see Michael Conforto in Pirates yellow and black. And he won't waste any time. First home run is a Pirate. Two run shot. And the first runs of the season are courtesy of the new signing. What a laser beam. Line drive home run from Michael Conforto. And he will put the Pirates on top. Buckos with maybe their only lead of the season. Big bomb from Conforto. Just got a pitch he could handle. Missed spot from Flaherty. And he did not waste any time. First swing. Put it right into the right field seats. Anthony Alford will get a hold of that circle change. And even the speedy Bader isn't quite fast enough to track that down. That'll fall right in front. Just a good piece of hitting by Alford. Hits righties pretty well. You know, you don't always see these, these guys that hit the same side of pitching better. But Alford is one of them. And I thought Harrison Bader might have tracked that down. But thankfully not. And we might have a two-out rally brewing. For the powerful Daniel Vogelback is Flaherty will keep Alfred honest at first. Great circle change. That seems to be the go-to strikeout pitch for Flaherty through one. And even though we didn't do any more damage, we did a lot of damage. Michael Conforto kept it fair, kept it straight. And that's what we call the anti-back smack <laughs> for Michael Conforto. As we get back on the mound here to start the second. Hit on the ground. Chavis there. This time he's going to run to the bag himself. Might have even been better to throw over to the pitcher that time. But you know what? He's not the everyday uh, first baseman. Hasn't been used to that. Did do that a little bit with the Red Sox. He'll have a chance to be the receiver here. Is Thompson going to make a really athletic play? Fire back across to Chavis. And that is out number two. As we'll see the veteran catcher, Yadier Molina. Yadi swings to run that to two strikes. And here is the one-two. Way outside from Zach Thompson. Here is the full count pitch. And Yachty draws the walk. The dangerous Harrison Bader now hitting in the eighth spot against right-handers for St. Louis. Interesting opening day decision. But he will work it to three balls against Zach Thompson who can't seem to find the zone. Just gets that sinker to drop in. And it is another 3-2 and two count. Thompson. Heater on the inside part of the plate. Bader wisely lays off. And it is Dylan Carlson in the 9 spot. And that is ball 3. Just missing. Is Zach Thompson... Here's a 3-1, and that gets a pop-up. Thompson underneath it. Always a tough play when it's hit right on top of the mound. But he makes a nice play, underrated play by the pitcher there when it's hit straight up into the air. And still, pretty good pitching from Zach Thompson. We've gotten into it a little bit, but can't really complain about this start. Up 2-0. It's only been two innings. It's early. You expect some, some good results, but uh, no complaints. And that is strike three. Chavis watches the slider just drop into the top of the zone. Unorthodox spot for the slider, but got a good result. Here's Kevin Newman. He'll swing through a slider. He's now with the Pirates. He'll get a hold of this one. It's driven deep to left. And that one will get out of here. Roberto Perez continues his hot streak. 
No, it's only opening day, but he had two grand slams in his last game played. And that was absolutely crushed. Great swing by Roberto Perez. You don't think of him as this big power guy, but over the past couple years, he's kind of developed a little bit of power to his game. And I say back with the Pirates, we have three home runs in his last like four ABs, including spring training. He might as well be Barry Bonds. And Brian Reynolds, did he miss this one? Similar to his first AB, but this one gets off the wall. Brian Reynolds will walk at a second base with a double. Just missing home runs in each of his first two ABs here. However, this one, he gets rewarded with a hit. Just hit it in the perfect spot. Because that was, you know, over 15 feet towards center. And that's an out, just like his first AB. But here's key Brian Hayes. Looking to do some damage. Look at a fastball and get underneath it. That should be a pop-up to end the inning. Yachty's underneath it. And that is the end of the second. But Roberto Perez seems like he can do no wrong with the Pirates. First AB is a home run off Jack Flaherty. And strike three. Edmund watching a cutter. It was a strike the whole time. And Edmund just left the bat on the shoulder. As Michael Chavis will knock this down. Sosa hustling down the line. Chavis fires to first and got him. Edmundo Sosa can fly. Chavis did a good job to knock that down and recover. And Zach Thompson getting to first, man. He hustled there and made a nice enough play. As that pitch missed. Just barely not a home run. As that ball was ripped off the bat of Paul Goldschmidt. Might get another chance on a hanger, but no. We'll fly this out to right field. The new Pirate Conforto underneath it. And we will see him bat this inning. Hopefully Conforto can do what he did the last time and go yard. But we will see O'Neill Cruz and Anthony Offord as well. This one driven deep to right center. Going back and at the track just before the track, and that is an out. O'Neill Cruz hit it pretty well, but Carlson found a way to get to it. Hung up a little bit too far, but here is Conforto for the second time. Went yard in his first at bat as a pirate. It's tough to do a whole lot better than that in your debut. Opening day. Hopefully he can match it. Looking for home run number two. Conforto doesn't homer, but drives one to right center. That one's going to get down. Carlson in pursuit. And Conforto will get to second base with a one-out double. This seems like it could be a very good signing for us. Homered, and now with a two-bagger. Conforto just a triple and a single away from the cycle. Triple, of course, is the hardest to get out of the way, but it, it's at least worth noting. As we'll see Anthony Alford who's one for one. And he'll hit that in the left center. Bader in pursuit, and Bader will track it down. Conforto baits the throw, but we'll get back to second. And that will be a walk. Vogel back doing a good job to fight, foul off pitches, and then eventually draw the walk. But it's not like Michael Chavis is especially great against right-handed pitching. Hopefully he can find one against Jack Flaherty. That is ball two away. Strike two on the inside corner. Already relievers going for St. Louis, and why not? This could get out of hand quickly. It's Brandon Waddle and Jake Woodford. But if Flaherty can work out of this, probably see him for a few more innings. Here is the 2-2. Two, -two. two out, two on. Two's all over the place. And Chavis will get a hold of this one. This is driven deep to right. This one will be played off the wall. We're going to send Vogel back home. Chavis rumbling in a third. Here's a play at the plate. Vogelback is safe. And it is 5-0 Pirates. Might call that a double. Might call it a triple for Michael Chavis. Depends on how they rule that with the throw. But got underneath it. But this short right field is working out real well for us so far. As we're just able to dink that off the wall despite getting underneath it. And that is the day done. For Jack Flaherty, Brandon Waddle will come in. 
And this is a pretty good time for it. Kevin Newman, the contact hitter. Bring us home. Could be 6 nothing. And this one is elevated, and I don't think that will be the case. Carlson under it, and that is the third out of the inning. But five runs through three here. Up 5 nothing over the Cardinals. What an opening day so far. It is early, but it is looking good. Serenado will fly out to Conforto, hopefully. Indeed, he does. Ooh, strike three. O'Neal tried to hold up, but couldn't. Zach Thompson just too filthy. But it is important to note, as Corey Dickerson back up, it is important to note that we are 63 pitches deep, only three and two-thirds innings into the game for Zach Thompson. And that will continue to run up as Dickerson will take a pitch low. Take a pitch in. Full count. Payoff pitch for Thompson. And Dickerson will chase. Cruz in pursuit. And when you're 6'7", you got long legs. You can get to stuff. O'Neill Cruz gets to it with absolute ease. And it is still... 5-0. Roberto Perez only hits home runs. That one dings off the foul pole. Roberto Perez is the new Barry Bonds in Pittsburgh. Two grand slams in spring training. For the last game of the season. Two homers in his first two ABs. He's not going to be in the nine spot for long. Even against righties even though this one came off a lefty. Roberto Perez, home run after home run after home run. As he drills the foul pole. As Key Brian Hayes will stay in that circle change just enough, drive that back up the middle. Could we see a one-out rally? Got a big-time power hitter coming up in O'Neal Cruz. Now, doesn't exactly hit lefties perfectly, but is pretty even in terms of splits against either side. And will again fly out. Got a fastball we could handle. But he just couldn't stay on top of it. That's the second out of the inning. Conforto two for two. Looking for that single and that triple for the cycle. Still a very long ways away. And that one's hit on the ground. Goldschmidt, the gold glover, no problem. As Conforto finally gets out. But Roberto Perez won't ever. He only hits home runs. Four home runs, including spring training, in his last five ABs. Roberto Perez is unstoppable. Sinker on the ground. Thompson can't handle it. Cruz coming on. And he'll have plenty of time against the turtle-like Yadier Molina. Even got the shell on the head and everything. Foul. And we'll bloop this one in the left. Alford can't get to it. Bader trying to go first to third. Here's the play at third base. And it is out. Bader gunned down by Anthony Alford. Not exactly known for his arm, but he does have the speed to go out and make that play. Short throw from shallow left. Great throw on a line to key Brian Hayes. And Bader is hosed. Michael Chavis, the only hope at keeping this inning alive. And he'll at least put some charge behind this one. But Bader will track it down underneath it in center. And that is a quick bottom five. 2-1 to Tyler O'Neill. O'Neill chases a cutter way outside. Here is the 2-2 two -two with two outs. And that is driven deep to left. Alford underneath it though. And that is the third out of the inning. Thompson shut out through six. I don't think we're going to see him for the seventh. But Roberto Perez, the right-handed Barry Bonds, will hit this inning. I can't tell if that's a compliment cash out. It doesn't sound like one. They don't want to deal with Roberto Perez, and he's going to walk. I wouldn't want to deal with Roberto Perez either. He's a home run machine. But something he isn't is fast. 16 speed over at first base. Brian Reynolds is going to have to hit the ball into the gap or out of here to really advance Roberto Perez too much. 
And he is down on the count, one and two. And Reynolds will shoot that to the gap. A little bit too much air underneath that. And that is out number two. Key Bryan, also a little bit too much underneath this one. And Bader tracks it down. So, no surprise. Pirates slowing down a little bit after a hot start. But we really can't ask too much more of Zach Thompson. 104 pitches deep into the game. You don't really see pitchers go that far anymore. And he is going to be done. We're going to bring in the newly acquired Pittsburgh Pirate in a trade with Minnesota, Jorge Alcala. And hopefully he's everything we think he can be, which is a stalwart in our bullpen. What's a stalwart? It's a good question. Uh, but we're going to walk the first batter. Not really a good start. As Yachty will come up. Runner on first. Nobody down. Swings through a slider. Whew. Alcala can really run it up in terms of velocity, though. Here's a 2-2. Fastball got down the middle. Doesn't matter. Coming in too hot. Yachty couldn't handle it. There's one away. Try to turn up the heat. Heater! And Edmund swings right through it. Elevate and celebrates as Jorge Alcala. That one was about a foot, maybe two, out of the zone. Doesn't matter. Great pitching. And, uh, yeah, Alcala's got some strikeout stuff. O'Neal Cruz hammers it. This one going deep to left. It's a moonshot either way. But Carlson camps underneath it. No problem. But that short porch and right, I think that's going to result in a lot of extra base hits. Cruz has hit the ball in the air. All three ABs. Way, way high. Just needs to just straighten them out a little bit more. Alcala loads, throws, and Arenado takes a pitch right there. At the letters, called ball four, and we will go to the bullpen. It'll be another new acquisition, this one from the Angels, Jose Suarez. Hoping for big things. And I think we like the matchup a little bit. Yes, O'Neal is a right-hander. Doesn't hit lefties quite as well. And that is evident from a ground ball to Chavis, but O'Neal can fly. Chavis does beat him with the bag, however. And we are still scoreless. For the Cardinals through eight innings. We're, we're shutting them out. We're not scoreless, obviously. I mean, we scored six runs. And, and Vogelbach will not see this AB. We're going to bring in the new Pittsburgh Pirate, Glaber Torres. Yes, he's a little bit tired, but he's not playing a full game. He's coming in for one AB. Here's the full count. And Glaber Torres first swing as a pirate. Deep to left. This one not coming back. Glaber goes yard. Two new pirates have hit in this game. Michael Conforto, first swing, homer. Glaber Torres, first swing, homer. And as if we needed any more insurance, Glaber adds it on. He kills lefties. This was the move to make, and Glaber didn't miss. Fastball, belt high, and crushed. All he could do was watch. He knew it right away, and a bat flip for good measure. 400-plus feet into the left field stands. Talk about making an entrance for these new Pittsburgh Pirates. These buckos, we got some new stars. We got some new stars. It's 7-0 at PNC Park here on opening day. And Perez finally goes down, swinging through a fastball. But look at the new pirate, Glaber Torres. Looking like a pirate, stealing whatever he wants. And he stole an at-bat and then hit a home run. That's the treasure. I don't know how many pirates references I can make. But um, are you not entertained? Oh, I'm going to end the video after that one. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave in Jose Suarez for the ninth. And see what he can do. Good matchup here, lefty-lefty against Corey Dickerson. As Dickerson put that on the ground, Chavis made a diving attempt. But it was foul anyway. Here's the 2-2. Suarez not with electric stuff. 
and Dickerson may have just missed that one. Conforto chasing it back to the track makes the play. One away. 2-2 two, two to Yachty. Suarez left a fastball down the middle. Yachty hits it deep to left. Alford in pursuit. Can't get it because a fan did. That one deposited in the left field seat. Cardinals on the board as Yachty Hermelina, the veteran, doesn't waste an opportunity. And yes, too little, too late, probably so. Maybe not the best debut for Jose Suarez. But he didn't pitch too bad. Just coming into for the second inning, maybe wasn't for him. But we're going to go to another new addition. It's Trevor Rosenthal. And hopefully Trevor does not blow them all. We'll see if we can get through Harrison Bader. And whatever Cardinal comes after him in the order. Strike three on the slider. Bader goes down. Beautiful pitch from Rosenthal, who should be our setup man. Not really going to be a ninth inning guy usually, but we needed him to today. Don't want to waste Bednar. Good stuff from Rosenthal. And he's one Dylan Carlson out away from walking out of here with the win. Fastball dribbled over to Chavis. Chavis back to Rosenthal. Beautiful flip. And that is your final Pirates with a dominant opening day performance over a division rival. And I wouldn't want it any other way. And it, yes, it's a different Cardinals team than what you're going to see in real life. Order was all over the place. And yes, it's a different Pirates team than you're going to see in real life. We have the additions of Trevor Rosenthal, Jorge Alcala, Jose Suarez. Didn't see Wascar Inoa today, but we did see a home run from Michael Conforto. Did see a home run from Glaber Torres off the bench. We saw, you know, the new players make big time plays. But we also see some Pirates making some plays. Michael Chavis had a couple big hits. Roberto Perez continues to be like the best player of all time. A two home run game. He's just the best. I don't know how, but he is. <laughs> and we got out of here with a W. So we are 8-13 and 13 at this point. Currently 5th in the NL Central. No real surprise there. But the biggest annoyance is that I accidentally simulated an extra game or two and Glaber Torres got injured. So that is really frustrating. Is there not a way to see injuries? Well, I guess not. I'll show you here. Glaber's on the IL for 10 days. He's out one to two weeks. I figured the 10-day IL was fine. And I'm interested in seeing how these prospects are doing, but that's something that you guys are going to have to wait for in the next episode. Man, Roberto Perez, four homers, hitting 182. Interesting. But do you take that? I think you do. Morale, not looking great for him, though. Why are they, You're the starting catcher. Fucking smile about it. And Glaber got injured in a game where he was the MVP. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Opening day, I would say, was a success. But as you can see here... In late April, we are only 8 and 13. It'll be an uphill battle this season, but hopefully one where uh, we can at least show some potential for the future. I'm not going to say we can fight uh, for a wild card spot. I think it's really unlikely. I want to be a little bit more realistic about that. But you know what? We're making some plays. And you're going to see some player lock in this franchise. You're going to see some critical situations probably for a little while. It's going to be an interesting season. Hopefully you, you are along for the ride. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.